Well, Marie Reed, this video was put together by Change the Ref, an organization performed by two parents who lost their teen in the 2018 Parkland shooting. Now, because their, seen, their son Joaquin was killed before he graduated, they say they wanted to visually show the impact that gun violence has. Congratulations. Uh, you all have made a new stage in life. The chairs are set. The stage is ready. Let me begin by telling you what an honor it is to be here. And the speakers, prominent gun activists John Lott and David King, think they're doing a rehearsal for a so-called James Madison Academy graduation. Except for one thing. This school isn't real. Follow your dream and make it a reality. Instead, they are unknowingly speaking to a row of over 3,000 chairs serving as a symbol. Advocacy group Change the Ref says they represent students killed by gun violence who should have graduated this year. I cannot find anything more painful in life than that. Group founders Manuel and Patricia Oliver say the three videos, now garnering national media coverage and thousands of views, was to prove a point. It was a very moving and powerful image. It's also fitting that this was done in Las Vegas, the site of 1 October, the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. Will Pregman with Battleborn Progress says the video also has an ironic twist. They agreed to speak at this event without doing, ironically, a background check to find out if this was a valid school or a real event. News 3 reached out to Lot, who says he was deceived. They insisted that I had to have uh, half the talk uh, be on James Madison and his views on Second Amendment and is ultimately disappointed by how it was edited. I gave a 15 minute address. Uh, what they put online is about one minute of, uh, of the 15 minutes and it kind of chops up and takes out of context numerous points that I was making. So it was quite disturbing in, in that sense. Good evening, everybody, from the pool here at Resorts World behind me are 3,500 rooms and a new chapter for Las Vegas. Las Vegas' newest resort stands on some hallowed ground. The Stardust once stood here, and now Resorts World will pick up the baton. Scott Sabella is the president. It's been a long time in the works here. Um, it's been a tough year on everybody, and we're really excited that it's, things are getting better, and we're excited about tomorrow night. What the public will get to see is a $4.3 billion behemoth. Resorts World partnered with Hilton to give the hotel giant its first reappearance in Las Vegas in years. Three Hilton brands are here. This is a suite from its upscale Conrad brand. It's got quite the view. Upstairs, as I said, 3,500 hotel rooms. Downstairs, a 117,000 square foot casino with 1,400 slots, 130 tables, and quite the technology. Download the resort's app and you can go cashless gaming. But it then transfers $100 from my cashless wagering account to the table. That's not all, says the guy who runs the casino, Rick Hutchins. He says the chips and the table have brains. There's an antenna under there that reads it and knows exactly how much I've bet. The pool plaza is one of the biggest in Las Vegas. It overlooks the strip. Back inside, there are 40 restaurants, some real fancy, others casual, and some designed just for your sweet tooth. Craig's Vegan is here from L.A. Vegan ice cream. Who knew? We have five flavors, um, and we're bringing in three flavors that will be available just in Vegas. Um, birthday cake, pistachio, and salted caramel. Resorts World is owned by gaming giant Genting Group from Malaysia. They bought the land this sits on in 2013 and incorporated the stalled and unfinished echelon that went bust in the recession. Opening was delayed, but that brought a stroke of luck. The resort now opens as Las Vegas gains steam and could accelerate our recovery from the pandemic. Doors open to the public tomorrow night at 11. In Las Vegas, Jeff Gillett, News 3. Like many other real estate markets around the U.S., realtors in Las Vegas are seeing a new element in play among home buyers and sellers, FOMO. No, it's fear of missing out. Realtor Pam Jungi says in this housing market, FOMO occurs when emotions start driving big financial decisions. With prices in the stratosphere, many homeowners are developing a fear of missing out, thinking it's time to cash out. For buyers, FOMO can be costly, trying to top competing offers. 
But the fear of missing out, the anxiety and the stress that these buyers are going through is that they're making offers before they're even seeing properties. I mean, sight unseen, they're doing anything and everything they can just to have a shot. Junkie says the fear of missing out can go too far, causing buyer's fatigue. Buyers simply getting tired of repeated letdowns from getting outbid on multiple homes. And for the sellers, they can still get a little too greedy and when they overprice properties to the degree that it's just beyond sensical anymore, um, those properties could still sit on the market and get stigmatized. Her advice to buyers, go in strong with your mortgage money to cover the appraised value plus cash to cover the difference in the market value. That's the actual amount you're paying for the house. Yeah, that's hard for a lot of buyers to like wrap their head around the fact that, well, if it only appraises for this much, why would I pay this much? Well, you're going to have to pay this much if you want to be a homeowner because there's a lot of other buyers out there with FOMO that, you know, they're willing to throw an extra 25000 at it so they know that they have a home to go home to at the end of the night. Hi, everybody. I'm Reed Cowan from News 3 Las Vegas. We want to thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Remember, you can always see more of our videos by clicking on the video links. And also don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our YouTube updates. Thanks for watching.